Hey everybody, oops, <laughs> already. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and if I can hold on to stuff today, I'm going to try to show you how to make one of these adjustable rings using our groovy cabs, which is a cobblestone that we have added a groove into that can accommodate quite comfortably up to an 18 gauge wire. Now you could do this with a 20 gauge wire as well, but since it's not joined together right there, I kind of like to use an 18 gauge. Um, just it makes it a little bit more stable. Um, that way if it like snags on something, because uh, this is a little bit more of like an ornate design, you know, uh, I'd definitely put it on after doing my hair. But it's a great starter project if you want to get into doing wire weaving. So we do sell these cabs, um, our groovy cabs, up on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. And any of the cabs that are suitable uh, on our website can be um, selected and... There's like if it's suitable for having a groove added, there's a little box that you can check whenever you click on the item and it takes you there before you'd add it to your cart. You can check that box and we would go through and add that little groove around to the edge. But all of our cabs come standard traditional non-groove. And we're exper uh, experimenting with doing some wee bitty. So we'll be wrapping a wee bitty one uh, in today's tutorial. But... I think it looks great with larger stones as well, and it's actually, I think, a lot easier with a larger stone, but that's why I wanted to do the tutorial with a small stone, because if you can do it with a small stone, you can definitely do it with a large stone. Okay, so there's a cat trying to get... I don't know if y'all can hear that. <laughs> when I record my tutorials, my partner Randy takes all of our fur babies upstairs um, into the living room so that they're not like barking at the mailman and stuff and it sounds like one of the cats got locked out um <laughs> or is unhappy about whichever side of the door they're on okay so hashtag super professional <laughs> uh we're gonna need some wire snips you gotta cut the wire off the spool um bare minimum i'd recommend recommend snips bent nose and round nose pliers but it can also be helpful to have some super petite round nose or some mandrel pliers or even some flat nose so but this would be if you're a beginner and you have very limited material or tools and materials i'd recommend these three pliers um a ring mandrel comes in very handy though you can also use anything that's the size that you want it to be like even a little bottle like this, if it's the right size of your finger, you could size it around something like that as well. Um, there are links down in the video description for all of the tools and materials that we're using here, and a lot of them are affiliate links, so if you purchase through them, uh, it greatly benefits our company with no additional cost to you. The gauges I'm going to be wrapping with are 18 gauge and 26 gauge. This is American wire gauge. Um, and... The colors I'm using are silver plated silver, so this is copper that's been plated with silver and then covered with a clear enamel. And then this is silver plated titanium. That's just the metal tone. It's not the actual titanium metal, but it's this nice like antique silver color that I really, really like. I think it, it matches stainless steel and oxidized sterling silver jewelry really well. So, and you can use whatever colors you want. So I'm gonna pull off about, hmm, 14 to 15 inches of our 18 gauge and these are these are para wire which is a very durable and affordable wire I use it in all of my work and have for over a decade so highly recommend them and then I'm going to use a full arm span so like five feet of wire uh, in the 26 gauge you could also use a 28 gauge but I really like the 26 for this because it adds just a little bit more substance to the ring it makes it a little bit less bendy if it gets snagged on something. Like, this is a style of ring that I'd wear it, like, to a party or something, not to gardening or folding laundry or, you know, something like that. <clears throat> so we have our full length of both wires cut. I'm going to set the 26 grade gauge just across my lap. And now I'm going to come in here and we can take our... This is a little moss agate bead, or is it a nephrite jade? I don't recall, but this one's a genuine gemstone. It's not one of our glass cabs. 
have a difficult time getting our calves to uh, come out that small actually whenever we're hand making them so I'm gonna bend it around most of the mandrel and then I'm actually going to come in here and grab where it's nice and curved with my flat nose pliers you could use your bent nose but I prefer my flat nose for this and I'm going to give this a 90 degree bend just out like that and now I'm going to rest that just there in the groove of the stone and then I'm going to bend this around and you can kind of see you can open it up now just enough to pop the stone out and then relax it back down I want to make this um, when it where I do the second bend I want whenever it's closed for that to be a little bit smaller than what we need it to be because we want to keep airing on the side of it being tighter on the stone as opposed to looser so I'm going to come in about right there if you can see in relation to the rest of the loop that we're making and I'm going to do a 90 degree bend maybe a little bit over and so now yeah you can see that little circle that it makes we want that to fit nicely into the groove so you can see here now whenever we have that closed there's no there's very little wiggle I'm gonna see just in case let's say we had made it way too loose so what we would do is we would straighten it back out and we would come back in a little bit further and bend again and so now we have that kind of shape going on <laughs> Sounds like the cat's losing her darn mind trying to go break down the door. Um, so we have our wire shaped around as nice and snug as it'll go onto our stone. And our next step is to begin the weaving. Now if we had done this with a 20 gauge, you can actually coil around the wire and then nestle that into the groove, which is pretty cool, but... Um, then not what we're doing today. We'll write address that if you guys are interested in a future tutorial. So I'm going to come with the tail of our wire, just about two to three inches of it between our two core wires. And I am going to begin with a figure eight weave, which is I've wrapped fully around one and then I cross. Like if you see both of the ends of the wire, we'll do a figure eight. So that kind of figure eight pattern going around and we'll actually do where we do one figure eight and then go around both. So right here, I have a loop on both wires. So now I'm going to cinch around one loop around both wires. There's once and twice and we can press that down just as much as we can with our thumb and I'm actually going to take this center wire here and I'm going to bring it up a little bit and we are actually going to treat it like we are sewing in our ends kind of like in crochet um, and we have two wires around both I'm going to zoom in real well for you so we've got one there and one there and then two around both and it looks very loose and messy right now but it'll start to come together hopefully so I'm going to bring this wire up and I'm going to wrap around both this wire and our 26 gauge wrapping wire and I'm just going to cinch that down there's one and then I'm going to bring it around on the bottom Again, if you can't get a good grip with your fingers, you can always just tug a bit on your wire. Make sure it stays kind of up where you want it to be. But yeah, we're exiting here on the back, so I'm just going to wrap once and twice. 
around both. So now you can see, maybe. Let me actually, there we go. So if you're able to see, we have the two wires around both, one around each, two around both. And I find that that really locks it in. And I'm just gripping with my fingernails, giving that a little tug. So yeah, coming around both. And then coming around the top. And in between our two core wires. Because I'm almost ignoring this one. I'm treating it like it is a part of this top core wire. And just pressing down. Then looping around from below to the front. And coming through like that and pressing down and now coming from above and behind kind of from this way because a lot of it on this is to just try to be consistent because it, regardless of how you're weaving if you're consistent then it's going to look like something intentional um and with consistency comes a sense of tidiness hopefully <laughs> and uh, you'll get the hang of it so again coming from around and behind We're just gonna oops, cinch that bit down. Oops, I don't mean to keep, I'm bumping the camera actually with my wire. And then I'm gonna bring this side around like that. So again, that one little stitch. And then being consistent about coming around from above and behind. Here's once. And I want to keep this kind of on the back side because it does make it a little bumpy and weird, but that's okay. And at this point, we actually don't need it on there anymore. So we can actually come in and snip. Because unlike thread, this isn't going to unravel. We just needed it nice and stabilized for getting it established. So now our lives are going to be a lot easier. So there's that one, coming around that one, and we can take our pliers just every step of the way, try to keep things just as tidy and consistent and intentional as possible. And so then there's one and two. And again, coming from around from above and behind, bringing it in between, then scooping around from behind towards the front. The front of the piece is the piece that's between, well, the backside and me. Just so that hopefully you all know what I'm talking about. And then coming around this way. One. Two. And coming around from above, then between, pressing down, and then from behind, and below, in between, and then from above and below, boop, boop, there we go. And then again, if you set your wire down and come back to it, it's from behind and above, and then behind and below. And so hopefully that will help you uh, to establish some consistency. And also you could use any old weave that you like on this one. And you can see it looks a little tricky right there where we were hiding that other wire. But if I'm going to take my pliers and notice I'm not squeezing hard on the core. I'm just, I actually have my finger in between kind of keeping them not quite closed all the way. But I'm just going to take this and I'm going to push up against our woven wire. And that's my favorite way other than using my fingernail. But I understand not everybody's fingernails are always feeling you know, their strongest. Um, and then you can just send, just smush 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 <laughs> and that can really help cinch down your weaving wire 
So let's say you didn't want to do this weave, you wanted to do the weave that we have going here, which I think actually shows off if you're using two different metal colors, you can show it off really nicely. So I'm just going to open this up a bit and I'm going to go, scooch that out of the way, one, two, three, four, and five, around one. Trying to manage the blurriness. And then one and two around both. And you could change it. You could do it to where it's three and three, or three and two, or three and one even. But I'm very particular. I don't know why. I, I particularly like um, five. It's a nice round number. Um, <laughs> and like, not really, but I don't know. I just, I like it. Four and five. And then one and two. Again, smushing as I go because it's going to help us to get much tighter results. If you're new to wire weaving, um, tension can be so difficult to manage, and that's okay. Um, that's completely normal. So again, be patient with yourself and be patient with the project because you will get better with practice. Practice does not make for perfection, but it certainly does make for progress. And cut yourself some slack. Whenever I'm starting a new project, I kind of revel in the... I quite possibly may never be this bad at this ever again. This is a rare opportunity to just be genuinely terrible at something. And that can be a lot of fun uh, because you're also, you're not limited by uh, anything. Like it's the, it's a new relationship energy with crafting, like so many possibilities and ideas and all sorts of things. And you don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work and there's no telling till you try it and that's that's such a rare and beautiful thing about crafting and i think that's why i'm always trying something new is uh it's just fun so let yourself have fun you don't have to be perfect it doesn't have to look exactly in your hands how it looked in your mind just have fun with it three four and five. Now, that is the artist in me speaking, the business person in me speaking feels guilty about, oh no, I wasted wire, or I wasted time, or that's bollocks. Like, <laughs> um, that's incorrect to think that way, because every single thing that you do, you're learning. It's never a waste of investment with your time and with your materials and with your energy, because you're learning off of what that you're doing. So, uh, so just as much with being patient with yourself as an artist, be patient with yourself as a business person as well, because you're th investing in yourself is one of the greatest investments you'll ever make. Um, and that, like all things, takes time and consistency, and you'll get there. One little wrap at a time. You'll get there. One, two, three, four, and five. So you can kind of see how we transitioned from one weave into another. I also feel like this one goes by a lot faster and it's a lot easier for me to keep my wires kind of tidy. Now, whenever you make a ring, depending on the size that you're going to be making, you'll want more or less wire in length. Now also whenever I make these to sell out of my booth, in my experience, most of the rings that we sell are anywhere between a seven to size 12 is what I keep in stock. But then I'll also bring my wire with me because if somebody wants something rewrapped, I can do that for them in the booth. Like if they want like a size four or something or a size 16, like um, we can do that. But whenever I'm making, sell it as is inventory those are the sizes that over the past like oof, since 2008 i don't know math <laughs> like uh that's how that's the ring sizes that we've sold the most out of our booth and off of our website so i'll try to make it to where the ring will be adjustable and still look nice and centered between those two ring sizes or not those two those two ends of the ring size spectrum rather but again, I do also always bring my stuff with me because you never know when somebody might want something custom. And uh, 
I don't make these pieces out of sterling silver for carrying in our booth. I only do sterling silver for like custom ring sizes. That way I know exactly what size the person wants. Um, and I can make it very specifically. But whenever it's craft wire like this, pear wire especially, is so durable and so affordable. I don't mind. And this is not sponsored. I just do really like their stuff. And I stand by it as well. I, I use it in our pieces because I trust it to hold up. Because it has held up. Through all sorts of stuff. Three, four, five. Now you'll notice whenever I pull my wires apart to make it easier to fit my weaving in, I do so kind of farther away because I don't want to be making any extreme bends in our in our core wires. And that way I can just kind of smush it back together. Whereas if I bent like that, whenever I bend it back, it's never quite as flat and pretty as what I, it was before I bent it. So twice. One. Two. Three, four, and five. I'm going to take this as an opportunity of shameless self-promotion and let you guys know that I really appreciate you and thank you so much for joining us here today in our tutorial. If you like our tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them and you've already liked and you've already subscribed and all that, uh, please consider joining our Craft Along Club. We send out kits every month. We do behind the scenes content and have exclusive coupons so that you can get 20% off of your orders from our website, backtoearthcreations.com, where we do shop updates every Monday. Uh, and we also send out craft along kits to like our $10 and up membership tiers. And that way uh, you can, whether uh, if you're international, we currently ship out at the $30 level to international folks. And we cover the shipping on that stuff too, y'all. So that way, uh, you know, if you live across the pond from us and um, you want to get your hands on some of our fused glass and on some para wire, that's a great way of going about that. And uh, yeah, we, we kind of do, at the time of recording, it is, what month is it? It's April. And we are sending out some of our groovy cabs in every single craft along kit. Uh, you get at least one groovy cab, that way you can try them out. Last month we did our glow-in-the-dark and resin uh, crescent moons. And in coming months we may be doing some different stuff with our homemade lamprey glass beads, as well as uh, possibly including genuine gemstones, like some labradorite maybe. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that um, in our craft along kits as well. So we're always trying something new, keep it funky and fresh for y'all. Okay, I think that's going to be long enough. How long is this? I'm going to measure it. That is about two and a quarter inches from the end of the stone to the end of our weaving. So let's zoom out. And I'm going to try this one at a size seven. I'm just going to bring it around. Oh, we still have a ways to go. <laughs> okay. But you can kind of see how that's coming together. And I do like to be able to I'll just smush that around a little bit more. And so now we have, you can kind of see we're at about this point on our weaving. So I'm going to split these guys just a little. It makes it so much easier to fit our coiling. One, two, three, four, five. We also have our calendar of events up on our website. And if you're watching this in the future, uh, we update our calendar with when we're doing live streams, new tutorials, shop updates, super craft alongs, or super craft alongathons, auctions, just whatever we have going on that month, we will be updating to our website calendar. And that's on our homepage, just scroll down to the bottom. We also try to post most days of the week over on like Facebook and Instagram to keep you guys up to date with what's new. Because we are also sort of in the midst of like uh, our urban homestead renovation uh, at the time of recording. Our kitchen sink is collapsing through our counter. Uh, so we're having to kind of gut that out and I can't wash my dishes. So, which has been a perfect excuse to just eat a bunch of garbage. Um, but, two, how many did I count? I can't count. Let's see. 
one, two, three, four. Okay, four little bumps. We're going to do one more. And uh, we keep you all up to date with stuff like that if you're into it over on our channel, The Monster Vlog, which is like um, all of my gardening and chickens and homestead and stuff uh, that we do. They, basically anything not jewelry related goes over there. And we're hoping to be able to start posting more and more to the YouTube channel as well as to the Monster Vlog uh, Instagram as well. Three, four, five. Gonna get another... Kind of want to do a steampunk version of this where we have like a gear, but it would be like a really long ring. But I think that'd be cool though. <laughs> maybe like a maybe not as a ring, but maybe as a. What if we did a gear right here? Oh, that would be so cool. Okay, we're gonna do that in a future tutorial. Using like a nice. Oh, it's gonna look so neat, y'all. Ah, oh, heck. Okay, it's gonna be basically just like this tutorial, but how to set the gear into it. Because we could totally do a gear with like a small bead like this fractal wrapped to it. Oh, that'd be so cool. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I really, <laughs> I have so much fun shooting these tutorials. Like, it's an honor to get to do this for a living. So thank you guys, just for hanging out. Like, you don't even have to be a subscriber. Just thank you for being here. Because it is truly our pleasure to get to share this with you guys. One, two, three, four, five. So, <clears throat> for reference sake, we did about a half an inch of intense, like, really tight weaving. Because, again, I wanted to keep that really snug on the stone. Um, and then we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We will finish this off with 20 repetitions of the five around one to around two, all the way around. And I think that's going to get us where I want to be <clears throat> as far as I'm going to bend this off to the side just a little bit. And um, one, I'm not going to count. I'm just going to and you can see here, the reason why I typically will just do one loop and then stabilize, one loop and then smush, one loop and then smush, is because that gets us a much tidier end result, I think, as opposed to doing, you know, if you can keep your coils close together, pardon me, <coughs> excuse me, dry throat, I've been chatting a bunch. If you can keep your coils relatively close together and then smush it, you don't get as much variation. Whereas if whenever you're coiling, you go like this and there's a lot of space in between and then you smush. Well, look at how bumpy that kind of came out. And if that happens, it's not the end of the world. I just press my fingernail up against what we're doing and I'm holding onto this wire quite firmly and I just cinch and twist everything together. I really like this ring. I keep forgetting that I'm wearing it. Then I see it because I'm like doing what I'm doing through the camera <laughs> um, so to try to stay in frame. And I see it and I'm like, oh, that's, a, oh, that's my ring. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's a pretty ring. I should make one like that. <laughs> oh, goodness. I need to get out more. Oh, um. Okay, so I'm not counting my coils as much as I am um, trying to get about an inch of coiling done. Because that will vary a lot. If you're using a thinner gauge wire, you're going to need to do more than 25 repetitions of that. Because the thinner coils, while it's minute, it really does add up uh, the distance that it'll cover with each coil. There we go. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, that is, I've just measured it on my table, that is an inch. And I'm going to leave it there because we can always come back and cut it later. I'm going to put this back on to our ring mandrel. And... Okay, we got it shaped around. I hope I didn't do too much. And I'm going to snip about an inch from past where our wire cuts off. 
like where our weaving stops. I'm going to find my round nose pliers and I'm going to grab as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the <clears throat> tip of the pliers as I can. And just doing this little like vroom vroom pan motion, I'm gently but firmly making a spiral. Now with that wire that we just cut off, you could totally practice making spirals. Because you don't want to be gripping so loosely that your pliers just slide off, but you also, you don't want to be gripping so hard that you dimple your wire because, or too close to the edge and you, let's see if I can do it on accident, and you pinch your wire like that. <coughs> Excuse me, oh goodness. Um, if you're using sterling silver or copper wire, you can kind of file that out, but on enamel, oof, I, I'll sometimes, if that happens, I'll come in and try to, like, smush it back down, but it's very difficult to, to reincorporate that blemish back into the piece. I'll oftentimes, if that happens, I'll just sniff it, snip it off and have a, uh, a smaller coil or a smaller loop. So we have our little spiral and I'm going to grab it with my finger and thumb and encourage this around to be in line with our bead. And so, yes, I think one inch will be too much. I'm actually going to open this up, snip from my pliers, just the 26 gauge, slide it off. Bring this down, smush that, and I'm going to snip about five millimeters past where our coiling stops. <clears throat> and I'm also being conscious of which side of my snips I'm cutting with. I like to leave my squared end on the working piece because with these flesh cutters, whenever you snip, it does a flat end and a pinched end. And so that's a design element to just be conscious of. Sometimes I like the pinched ends, especially if I'm working in bare copper, because then it can kind of give you like a very artful, like, whoop, like tapered end. But here on the pair wire, it can kind of expose, whenever you cut it, it can expose the little copper inside. And I like to hide that. Just like that, by making a little spiral. And I'm coming around just as much as I can have my pliers be grasping. And then I'm going to grab with my finger and thumb. You could also use nylon draw pliers for this part. I have broken mine. So <laughs> working on getting a new pair, but it's still going. Now, and you can see where my pliers touched, it actually split my coil. You can actually just get back in there and pinch that back together. And there we are with our spirals lined up. So this is how our adjustable ring came out. And let's say you wanted to resize this to be larger. I'm going to do it but for both larger and smaller. So I would start by, let's say I wanted to make this a size 10. <clears throat> I would slide it down to a size 10, but now you can see this isn't necessarily centered anymore. So what I would do from here is I would actually uncoil this spiral a little bit and uncoil this spiral a little bit. To do that, I'm going to take it off of the mandrel and just kind of reposition it. So now it's larger, but everything is right down the center as we had had it originally. And if I wanted to make this one smaller, <clears throat> so it's sitting at about a size eight, so let's make it a size six. So I'm going to hold the stone and I'm going to bring this around and you can see it really needs brought in more. Oof. And now this one, I don't know if I would size it down to a size six. Now we could have that come off to the side if the client is happy with that. Though I think this ring sits happiest at around a size. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because we can just kind of cinch this around. Because again, my whole end goal is to get everything to be 
centered. And so you don't necessarily want to take your coiling too high up on this spiral because that limits you. Like here we could still go a little bit, you know, on this one. But you'll get the hang of it. I do hope that this was helpful to y'all. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Which one do you like better, the large ring or the small? I personally am glad that I have two hands so I can wear them both because I love them both. But I think a lot of it depends on what I'm going for. And I think I like the smaller ring just a little bit better. But I also love that one. This one would be better for like daily wear. This one would be like if I'm like dressed up. You know, so that's just me though. But uh, yeah, um, thank you guys again so much for hanging out with us. I really do hope that this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, leave them down in the comments below. Or you can send me an email at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com and I will try my best to help y'all out. Um, links to everything, social media, craft along club, all that stuff are down in the video description below. And until next time, y'all, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye! <laughs>